Hey guys, it's Griff here from the Rock Band Relief Team. This is a tutorial video meant to help uh, any Rock Band Network authors who have songs that are already in progress, that they either stalled on a while ago and now they want to get back in and finish them. Uh, or maybe you're like me and you had songs that were already in the testing and peer review pipeline and missed the cutoff. Uh, and now that the standards have changed, um, and we have to go back in and uh, update our songs to match the new Rock Band Network 2.0 authoring standard uh, to take advantage of the new uh, Rock Band 3 functionality. So this is not a tutorial video for people who are new to the authoring process, but if you like this video, uh, I could definitely uh, make some more to support that. But I've gotten such good help over the last year from the authoring community that I wanted to at least make some sort of a contribution. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody. and. Um, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the process for taking a song that uh, already exists that was authored under the original Rock Band Network standards and making it ready for submission uh, under Rock Band Network 2.0 is sort of a two-phase process. The first part uh, involves updating the Magma file uh, which essentially consists of um, all your metadata. There's just a few additional fields that uh, we make use of in Magma version 2 and that actually just takes a minute and then the second phase is more substantial and that involves going going back into the Reaper file and making a series of changes uh, so that your MIDI will actually compile in Magma v2 and then it'll be ready for uh, submission for testing. <clears throat> so in terms of uh, the Magma side of things uh, we're going to take a look at what's new in Magma version 2 just for a minute and that essentially um, boils down to they've redone the choices for the possible music genres. Um, there's obviously new areas where we add the audio for any keyboard or vocal harmony parts. There's a new auto generation feature um, that uh, if you don't have the time to go in and do a lot of work on your venue in terms of your camera and lighting you can actually have Magma do that for you. And um, so we'll take a look at how that happens. And then um, obviously you need to set difficulties for any keyboard or harmony parts that you might have. Uh, and then we'll come back and take a look at what's going to happen on the Reaper side of things in just a couple minutes. So for this video, I'm going to be working with a song called Happy People by Big Kenny. If you're familiar with the group Big and Rich, uh, Big Kenny is one half of that duo, and Big Kenny um, contributed two songs for this charity fundraiser that we're doing for Nashville, uh, and I actually had um, this song into the peer review process when the cutoff happened, so now I need to go back in and update the song so that it will be ready to submit under the new standards. So this is uh, how the song looks in the original version of Magma that you're used to seeing. Um, and then uh, when you install Magma V2, it can actually coexist with the original Magma rather than replacing it. Um, so you want to be careful when you're looking at your uh, start menu that you're launching the new Magma V2 because the original Magma will still be there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and close this and then we'll open it in uh, Magma V2. It's a slightly bigger window. And as I was saying earlier, um, one of the first things that you'll notice uh, that's different is the musical genres have changed. Um, so we have new uh, new things that we can choose from and new subgenres within each of those main musical genres. So if you were um, having trouble classifying a song under the original version of Magma, uh, you might have better luck now. So um, the next thing that's different under the audio tab is we now have areas where we can uh, upload our audio stems for keyboards and for vocal harmonies. Uh, and vocal harmony actually still is rendered as part of the, the backing tracks down here, but um, we upload separate dry vocals for harmony parts two and three, which um, help, helps drive um, scoring and lip sync. So uh, the last thing that's different is under game data. Um, obviously you're gonna be setting difficulty ratings for your keys and pro keys. Uh, and then the last thing that's different is um, if you want to auto-generate your venue, um, you just make sure that you have no uh, cues in your venue track in Reaper. And then as long as that's the case, you can choose from one of these pre-made themes and Magma will actually auto-generate cues for you based on the practice sections that you add to your song. And we'll take a look at practice sections in just a minute. 
Uh, one last thing here, we're also able to listen to a guide pitch while we're testing songs uh, that help us compare the audio that we're hearing in the actual singer's vocals with um, a MIDI guide pitch similar to what we hear in Reaper, um, but that helps us tell whether we've, we've got the notes right on or not, especially when we're looking at other people's songs. Uh, so what happens when we try to build a song that is opened straight across from Rock Band Network 1 is we'll get an error right away that essentially tells us that um, this has been compiled under the wrong um, version number. And so the way that you solve that is you just um, resave the file. So now I'm going to go ahead and just save and that will automatically update the version of the underlying file and then when we build it's going to actually start telling us what's wrong with uh, <laughs> what's wrong with our MIDI and there will be quite a bit um, but fortunately all these things are pretty easy to fix it just takes a little bit of time so uh, one of the things that um, you'll notice right away is uh, I had a, a couple of text events right at the very very beginning of the song and Magma will now throw errors uh, if, unless you move those out a couple of beats. I don't know the exact reason for this, but my guess is it may have something to do with uh, an audition um, issue that we had under the original version where sometimes the crowd would be frozen uh, until the uh, until you got a couple beats in and then things would sort of go back to normal. So this may be working around that, but I, that's just conjecture. I don't know, actually know that for sure. And then you'll notice that uh, Basically, the rest of the errors that I'm getting are all related to bad MIDI notes in my venue track. And the reason for that is um, almost all of the stuff that we were using MIDI notes for in the venue track have now been converted over to text events. And so that's the biggest chunk of the work that needs to be done in, in moving a song over is taking those MIDI note uh, cues that we had gone through and set and turning them into text events instead. And then uh, another type of error is related to these directed cuts that I had, which now have um, slightly different names. The camera cues have essentially been redone, and so I'll show you how to um, update those to match the new standard. So the good news is, if you're not adding any new Rock Band 3 specific functionality, all you have to do on the Magma side of things um, to move your song along is basically open it in Magma 2 and save it. And that's literally um, all there is to do there. The only ha time you have to do anything special is if you're going to start adding keyboards or uh, vocal harmonies. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, the new functionality in Reaper. And I'm not going to uh, go into a whole lot of detail about keyboards and harmonies because this song doesn't actually make use of those features. Um, so I may, if it's helpful, put up some separate videos that go into more detail on, uh, on those areas when I've got a song up uh, that's going to use those features. Took a chance on an inside joke. 